this is Erica of Fibers and Floss Canada. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode today. This is a channel all about cross stitch and you guys are all very welcome here. Today I have a few things for you. So my last episode I did a giveaway. Um, I think there were eight different patterns. I did a bit of a stash dive, went through all of those and some of the patterns that I had already stitched I thought I would pass on to other stitchers. So at the end of this video I will um, name those people and if you are someone that's won one of the giveaways please go ahead and email me at fibersandfloss at gmail.com and I will pop those in the mail to you right away. Um, so today it's just a regular episode for you. I will share everything I've been stitching for the last couple weeks as well as some new starts um, around Robin which I'm wrapping up and some community events as well. So we'll start off with Book of Days. Um, this is something that I always just share. It's a way that I'm able to document um, my cross stitch any sort of work I've been doing and not just cross stitch I also you know if I'm working on knitting or whatever it may be I, I note that down as well um so this is October so far I have all my whips on the side here and there's 25 of them and um I am now officially out of space my last one I've just started is not even on a line so that means I'm going to have to wrap some of these other ones up uh, the stickers that I have is just from a, a random sticker book. I have quite a few of them, uh, ones that I purchased from Amazon or a little um, like paper cl collective sort of shops. And yeah, the days I'm working, I have lots of stickers, which is mainly the Sundays and Mondays. And then any other days I'm not working, I try to log a little bit of crafting time. Um, the red hearts are days where I have met up with other stitchers and this is one as well here. I just haven't had a chance to pull out my pencil crayons and pencil that in. Okay. You know, it's funny, I, where I live I have a train and the train very rarely comes by, but whenever I film a floss tube, the train always comes by and I can hear it. It's outside, it's making some noise. If I have to pause, I will. Um, okay, so what have I been stitching on? Um, I first, you know, which way to do this? Okay, so I've been trying to wrap up some of my whips because um, my whip list is getting a little bit on the long side. And so one of the projects I hauled out for October was a, um, a previous stitch along and it's called Greenhouse of Oddities uh, by Lola Crow. And that stitch long did complete, I think it was like last year, 2023 or something like that. Um, and I ended up not participating in the stitch long. I started it uh, October of 2023. So um, what I had done previously, if I have a picture, I'll put one in. I'm not sure if I do We'll see. And if I had not, um, I basically done the top half of the pattern, so the first three pages, and then I was able to complete um, page four over the last little bit. And so I have page five and page six left to go. So that being said, I will show you where I'm at. This one here too is being stitched on a 28 count um, haunted by Picture This Plus. This is a, um, a Lugana. Here's where I am. So this piece has been really fun to stitch largely because of the fabric choice. I absolutely love this fabric. So again, it is Haunted by Picture This Plus. It is a Lugana, so you're getting a little bit of a different dye effect than you would if you were dyeing on a natural, like 100% cotton, so, or linen, so either Ada or linen. Um, but the fabric is so, so beautiful. What I was able to do here this time was do some work in the center. So first of all, I tried to finish stitching out the frame and I got a little bit discouraged because when I got to the bottom here, as you can see with my hanging thread, it didn't line up. And I, you know, this isn't a problem that I have often and I don't know, I am off like, or I'm over by four stitches and I'm down by two stitches. And I'm just like, what? I don't even know how that happened. No idea. Obviously my mind must have been somewhere else when I was trying to stitch that. So what I had done is, um, you know, the whole pattern on the bottom kind of has this brown like dirt and it just kind of extends along the bottom here. And I think that, um, 
You know, I don't know if I actually need to rip it all out or not. I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to continue to work my way down through here and then just see where I'm at here. I wonder if I could fudge it, if it's worth fudging. If it's not, I'll rip it out. I don't really know. Well, we'll see where I'm at. I just thought, you know what? That's enough of that. I'm going to move on into the colors. The great thing about this piece are her colors. Like, just look at how bright all that is there. It is so, it's such a fun, fun piece to stitch. So I was able to do the girl and her easel, um, the plants. The owl I think was done previously, I did not do him, but I did like, you know, the little Venus fly trap and the fly and stuff like that. So um, it was a lot of fun. I definitely recommend this, especially if you're looking for something that has, um, you know, a little bit of color. You, I love color, right? So any piece that is bright and colorful, I find that I just fly through it because I really enjoy stitching that. Um, yeah, so hopefully, uh, I would like to finish this probably for next October. Um, and I think that's a doable goal, so. Yeah, I really enjoyed that one. The next piece I started um, for just sort of like more Halloween stitching was a new start. And this is one that I saw on um, Brenda and Laura's channel. It was a piece that they rescued from the, um, you know, one of those like thrift store Salvation Armies or whatever you call them. And this piece is called Halloween Cat by Satsuma Street. And when I saw it, I thought, oh, that is a really fun, bright piece. So I love stitching, you know, samplers and stuff like that too. But I find I need a contrast between, you know, the very traditional sort of dull colors or muted palette, let's say, to something that's really bright and fun. And so, you know, Satsuma Street is really, really great for that. So what I ended up doing on my last uh, regular episode is I talked to you guys about fabric choices. So I ordered a fabric very similar to this one here. Um, and I also had another fabric that was a little bit kind of like this color in here it's called chalice and it's like a peachy color it's kind of a yellow peachy pinky color um and so it was between those two and i actually did decide to stitch on the blue and the only reason being is that when you look closely at the pattern here with this moon when you have the clouds or the trees or what have you um kind of overlapping and so they're bringing in these different lighter colors as well which is fine but then i have the thought of if i stitch on the lighter fabric I actually may need to change out the colors here or here as well and if I try to do that um, you know or someone had actually a great suggestion of stitching a blue moon which I thought was really cool but then I would run into maybe some issues with that um, the overlapping colors there and I just didn't want to put that much work into it I just thought you know I'm just gonna stitch it as it's called for so um, this piece has been a really fun I've put, um, I think about six days worth of stitching in it, and this is where I'm at. So I've almost completed the cat. I did a bit of an outline on him because I had uh, a couple stitchy meetups that I wanted to be able to just mindlessly fill something in. He is missing his whiskers at this time and his mouth. I did try to do the back stitching on that and I just wasn't very happy with it. And I thought, you know what? It's not, I wasn't in the mindset. I'm just gonna pull that out and I will finish that at another time. So this beautiful blue fabric, um, this is Blueberry by Fiber on a Whim and it is a Lugana um, and it's, what count is this? The 32 count, I had to look, I wasn't sure. And I'm using the called for floss, which is all DMC. So very easy to cut up. It was a PDF download, instant download. Um, the, you know, the longest thing I had to wait for is the fabric. And I just ordered that from one, two, three stitch and it took, you know, it's usual five days to um, get to my box. So that was pretty easy for me to pick up. Um, okay, the next thing that I started was a project for Thanksgiving. So I live in Canada and we already had our Thanksgiving. Um, I know you guys in the States and most of my viewers are American or from the States and your guys this isn't until November but ours has already happened. So on Thanksgiving Day I had a new start and for that I did um, Turkey Day. 
And Turkey Day is by, I can never remember, Cottage Garden Samplings. Uh, I always want to say Cottage Prairie, which I don't, I don't even know where that comes from. <laughs> Um, again, really like the colors in this piece, thought it was really quite um, a fun stitch, something to stitch up quite quickly. Now, to be honest with you, uh, I only stitched on it one day on Thanksgiving. Um, I don't know why. I, you know, I'm going to stitch on it some more over the next couple weeks before I tuck it away. I think it'll be fun to show you guys um, in a couple weeks where I'm at because you guys will be prepping for your Thanksgiving, so you may appreciate that. Yeah, so it's a really great pattern. On my previous uh, floss tube, I also asked you guys about colors because I had straw and I had this mallow color. Um, I chose to go with a mallow, the more muted color. I love straw and I'm dying, dying to stitch something on it. Um, you know, I, I had a really nice size uh, piece of it as well. And I've opted to save it for... Um, Oh, what is that pattern? The flowers by Hands Across the Sea with everybody is stitching it. I can't, I'll put a picture in because I cannot think of what it's called right now. But I'm going to save it for that. Um, so for Turkey Day, this is where I'm at. I didn't, it's actually kind of hard to see. I did some cream, which you can barely see. There, you can see it a bit better. And some of the brown. So not a lot of stitches there. I think it's about 200 stitches, if you can believe that. Um, this is being stitched on 40 count mallow uh, linen by, I don't remember who, oh, Swigart, obviously. There you go, orange stripe, right? And the fabric or the uh, floss I'm using is DMC and it also calls for a couple strands or a couple skeins of um, gentle art. So I've just, I'm using the called for on that. So this one is gonna be uh, kept out and I will work on it somewhere and I'll have some really nice progress to show you guys uh, in a couple weeks. Now, in terms of, um, I have another new start for fall. Previously, I've had no fall sort of themed cross stitches. Um, I wasn't really a big theme stitcher. In 2023, I started stitching a little bit of Halloween. I've always stitched Christmas. Um, but, you know, I typically haven't stitched, you know, spring or summer. And I'm wanting to get into having a seasonal stitch on the go. And so um, Turkey Day is kind of seasonal, in my opinion. And then the other one that I really wanted to start was something that I had kitted up. Um, and this is Autumn Quakers by Rosewood Manor. And this is a really fun piece. For me, I actually chose to save this. And, um, you know, part of our, this kind of blends into my community corner I wanted to touch on today. Um, part of our community corner, there's this lovely Stitcher Manavir, and she is Mama Bear, Mama Bear dot Stitcher on Instagram. I think that's how it is. I'll put it on the screen just in case I'm incorrect there. And she was able to organize a get together at one of our local libraries. So um, some of us had shown up and started stitching and a couple of us actually brought some new starts. So this is the one that I had chose to bring. This is not a new pattern. This pattern was done in 2014 by Rosewood Manor. And the reason why I selected this, there's two reasons. I've never stitched a Quaker pattern before and I've never used Valdoni floss before. Um, and so I thought this would kind of be nice to just explore something new that I haven't uh, done yet. And so you guys remember I had made this little um, stitchers box here. And the nice thing about it is that the Valdoni floss, um, oh, I've got some stuff is falling out of it. I've got so much in here now. Hold on, I'm just gonna take some stuff out. Um, the Valdani, oh, my light died, that's okay. The Valdani floss fits absolutely perfectly in here. Isn't that gorgeous? How fun is that? So this has been really fun to work with. And, um, you know, the, the one big thing was when I had ordered the fabric for this is it calls for a 28 count. And unfortunately for me, um, I had ordered it and it said, yeah, it will be coming and you'll get it at the end of November. And I thought, well, it's 
bit late for me because at that point I want to be stitching Christmas and so I thought no problem I'll just order a 32 count not considering that well Donnie is a three ply floss um, and so I asked everybody you know have we had experience with fall Donnie floss before is it something that um, is it okay just to separate it down to the two strands has anyone used it on a 32 count and have they stitched the three strands on a 32 was that too thick um, and so so there was a lot of really great feedback on that and what I decided to do is um, stitch it with three ply on the 32 count and see how it looks and the reason why I wanted to try this is because being a three ply and it's variegated um, you know I would just have to be a little bit more mindful in terms of where I'm cutting how I'm folding that floss over um, and I just thought, you know, sometimes you want to put the work into the piece to make things perfect. And sometimes you just want to stitch because I just want to stitch. Stitching is such a um, stress reliever for me and uh, really helps to ground me. And it's almost meditative. So I thought, you know, I'll try the three ply. And I did. And it's thick, but it works. Uh, you know, I'm not dealing with any sort of shredding or anything like that. So... Oh, too much talking, right? So this is where I'm at. <laughs> um, I've started in the top left corner. And um, now that my light has gone out, the colors are a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit darker than they actually look in real life, but that's okay. I was actually quite surprised when I stitched this because, let me see if I can show you. When you look at the pattern, so when I look here, you see the color there, it's kind of like a bluey, if I go here, it's like a, a bluey, sorry, it's like a browny green. And when I look in the pattern, it's very orange. See that little arrow shape? So it's very different. And I thought to myself, am I using the wrong colors? You know, is this mislabeled? Am I reading the wrong spot on here? But I'm not. When I look at these colors here, um, you know, they seem to work everywhere else. It's just that one arrow. So I actually wonder if in the pattern they've charted with the wrong symbol there. I'm not sure. Anyways, doesn't matter. I'm stitching it. I'm enjoying it. And that's all that matters right now. Um, for this stitch, it is a 32 count doubloon. And that is by Picture This Plus. I'm not even sure who did that. So the fabric itself is lovely. It's going to be a longer piece. I'm really happy with the modeling on it. And I think it will be a fun seasonal uh, project. And, you know, I like the idea of the Quaker being able to pull it out. So I've only worked on this one day. And on the one day, I was able to start it with the ladies and then come home and finish that motif there. So, I mean, there are a couple, you know, larger motifs, but the smaller ones, you definitely could do, you know, in a day, right? If you have a couple hours to sit down and do some stitching. So um, that is another piece that I'm going to keep out over the next couple of weeks and work on. I think it'll be really fun just to, um, again, have that seasonal piece. Now I have a past finish I want to share with you. And the reason I want to share this is um, because I had a lot of fun with it. And, you know, the colors were good. It's, I guess someone might say it's not seasonal to Halloween, but I feel it's very Halloween-like in my opinion. Um, and this pattern is called Guardian of the Woods by Witchy Stitcher. And so it's one that I was able to pop into a frame. I framed it myself, just using the lacing technique on the back. I was able to find a video um, on YouTube can't remember the name of the gentleman. This old gentleman was doing a video. I thought, oh, I'm gonna see what he does because, you know, I watched some of uh, the floss tubers do their tutorials and I've tried to lace before and it didn't really work the best. And I thought, well, why is this guy who's like 70 years old making a floss tube video on 
well, a YouTube video on lacing a cross stitch. Clearly, he must be a framer of some sort, and he is. And I followed it. It was very simple to follow. It worked perfectly. I was very, very happy with the technique. He gave a couple tips too, um, talking about with the lacing going back and forth. You know, people like to pull it really tight. He says, don't pull it really tight. It, that is not needed. Um, and also using a thick enough uh, piece of, um, I was going to say string. It's not string thread. Um, he actually recommends using like a number eight cotton, like a DMC. Um, just something where it's, depending on the account of your fabric, it's not going to slip through your fabric. Your fabric will actually hold it because your thread needs to be fat enough. It's going to be not snug, but not loose when pulled through your, um, your linen or whatever fabric you're stitching on. So I had um, some number if I use number five or number eight now um but I did exactly as he said and it worked out awesome like I framed it up in no time at all first try it was perfect so I'm very happy with it anyway so this is guardian of the woods or the other name for it is leashy um it was a really fun pattern to stitch I had stitched that in 2023 um the whole pattern I think I stitched in like six days or something like that it was very very quick stitch for me just because I enjoyed it and if I really enjoy something and it's on my days off you know there could be could be a possibility where maybe I might stitch for seven hours one day right and I mean if we could only do that every day there's just not the hours um, but when you do do that you can make some serious progress quite quickly so uh, yeah very fun very um, you know my opinion kind of like a creepy Halloween pattern but I mean that's what the witches witchy stitch is great at right so this pattern I also have as a giveaway and I'm going to uh, announce that right now. I might as well while I have this up. So the code word for this pattern was guardian and for that one um, there was 34 entries and I'll put a picture on the screen here of the winner but it's at Lareal. I think. Um, so if that is you, send me an email and uh, I'll get that out to you right away. It's a very fun pattern to stitch. Okay, so my last piece of stitching I want to share with you guys today is, oh, let me just say, if you're wondering what the fabric, this was a 32 count olive green uh, by witch Hilt, and then it's just all the called for a DMC floss is what I had used to stitch that with. So my last piece of stitching to share with you today is actually my round robin, which we are just wrapping up. So um, I'm doing a round robin with Samantha the Huga Stitcher and Sarah, who is Lady Lugana. Sorry, I'm realizing I'm kind of balancing all these stitches I've showed you on my lap. I don't know why, but I am, and I think it's wiggling my camera. So I apologize if that's been the case. Um, anyways, Samantha has my piece right now and I have Sarah's piece and I'm just getting to the point where I have about one more week to work on it and then I'll be popping it in the mail and sending it off to her. Um, and so I haven't worked on it a lot this month so I need to really get that going so I can uh, wrap up what my goal is and send that off. So this is um, Symphony Bouquet by Design works. This is a very loved pattern for sure. Um, it was something that her mom had purchased for her. She had started and if you are new to our channel here on Our Round Robin we chose to pick projects that were um, not brand new for us. They were something that we've had um, as a whip and we wanted to get some more progress on and so this was something that her mom had bought for her. It was her first kit and uh, she just wanted to make some more progress on that. So Samantha was able to make some pretty good progress and then she sent it on to me and I've been able to get some good stitching on it as well. Um, so I will show you where I'm at. I don't have enough board so I didn't get to pre-pin this one. Okay, not pin but you know, clip it. So this is where I am. Oh, here's a picture of where I was, blah, blah, blah. 
I hope you guys like that, the where I was and where I am now. I liked it because it's otherwise it's hard for me to see what a stitch has done, right? Um, and this is where I am now. So what I've done is, since I've had the whole piece, I've done this here and about the bottom part of this rose and um, a fair bit of the back stitching through here. There's a lot of back stitching in this piece. So this is stitched on 14 count. Uh, I don't think it tells me the type of Ada, but it is like a, um, you can see it's like a heathered, like a cream heather. And uh, yeah, so it's been really fun so far. I've been able to get some good progress. There's a lot of confetti stitching in that hydrangea. And then the rose is complete. I just have to backstitch it. And my goal before sending it to her is to um, is to finish down here. Now there is a fair bit of stitching there. It doesn't really look to be too much, but when you look at the pattern, again, there's a lot of confetti. So let me just put the board down. With it not being pinned, I can't wiggle it around so easily. Um, this one's a bit of a bigger picture. So I have to do all of this down here. And there's some block stitching with the um, the leaves, but then there's a fair bit of, you know, just a couple stitches here, a couple stitches there, and all those little, um, I don't know what you call those little berries there. I know there's lots of gardeners that watch this. You guys are probably just dying that I don't know the name of it, but I don't know it. So my hope is to complete that um, and the back stitching and then get that off to her. So we will see what I can do. Um, it's also Nora November is coming up next week. And um, I have a couple Nora Corbett patterns that I'm just dying to start. But I have so many starts I need to wrap something up. So I'm not sure. I had planned on initially starting um, a different Nora, uh, Nora design um, every week for Nora November but I don't know that I want to have that many on the go. Um, I do have, yeah, I've got some really nice ones. Uh, for my birthday, I got the Aries one from my parents. I'll put the picture in here for you guys. Um, that's all kitted up, ready to go. I also have an old copy of uh, Tiger Lily design, or Ti Tiger Lily designs. It just rolls off my tongue now, right? Tiger Lily, um, which is a pixie, and she's all kitted up, ready to go. Um, I'm excited to do her because um, the fabric I have chosen, instead of it being like a really stark white, it is a like a darker, almost like a tan, but there's some some green in it too, and a little bit of orange. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but I think she's gonna look really good on that. And then um, another one, I've got a couple other little ones that I'm, I'm dying to stitch as well. So not sure if I'm gonna start that or if I should just maybe wrap up some of the stuff I already have um, and then move on to some Christmas stuff mid-November. So I haven't really made a final decision on that, I do have a question for you guys too, just before we do the giveaways, um, is what are your guys' thoughts on Christmas? I know it's a little bit early, but I'm hoping to do some sort of advent calendar that gets the Stitchy community a bit more connected. Um, something that gives you some prompts for maybe 12 days where you're able to do stuff that will connect you with other local stitchers. Um, also kind of get you into, you know, the Christmas spirit. So if you guys are interested in something like that, can you leave me a comment to let me know? I'm just looking at considering planning something for that. Um, I'm also working on a little Christmas cross stitch design as well that I hope to have released uh, for December for everybody for free this year, um, just as a little Christmas gift. So that's taking a little bit of my time as well and I'm I'm not sharing that progress with you guys quite yet but in December it's something that if you're interested in you'll definitely uh, have access to and be able to work on it. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is uh, in community if you're in the Lower Mainland um, there's a new group that's meeting up called 
uh, knots and plots and um, unfortunately the timing of this video isn't ideal as um, their first meeting is Wednesday the 23rd of October which um, will be today that I'm releasing this and um, what's happening is they're actually meeting at a movie theater and watching the original uh, Beetlejuice Yes, I think it's Beetlejuice they voted on. And any stitchers can go if they like. Uh, the lights will be left on low and you're able to stitch there. Um, the, the cost to go is sliding scale. It's a minimum $15, but that gives you your admission ticket, a popcorn and a pop. Um, and so a lot of these crafters are knitters or crocheters, but you can bring any sort of stitching you like. So if you want to put on a neck lamp and bring your cross stitch, if you want to bring some EPP, um, or maybe you just want to go watch the movie, you're totally welcome to do that. So I'm going to share on Instagram here. There are not some plots. Um, if you guys want to go, you can buy the tickets direct online right off their uh, Instagram page. And they also have knots and hops as well, where they meet at a local um, brew house, the Barley Merchant in Langley area. And, um, you know, you can have, you can eat or just have a beer and do some stitching as well. So if you're looking for a community connection, that's a really great one. Uh, one of my friends, Angel, organizes that. And so they have had really good success with the knots and hops and I think the knots and plots will be fun so I plan on attending that one uh, I guess it will be tonight so um, on to my giveaway winner so I have eight giveaways I've already done the one with the Guardian for you guys um, for all of these giveaways you guys if this is you and I call your name just send me a quick email to fibersandfloss at gmail.com if you forget that it's in the description box for you um, I will just need your name and your mailing address please and I will get that out to you guys right away so, um, the Guardian is done. The next one was Moonlight Owls. And this um, design was by Dylan Atter for Custom Crafts. And the code word was OWLS. There were 32 entries. And our winner here is Vicky Delaney 7097. Um, for all of these things, I just used the YouTube random con comment picker. Almost a condom picker. Could you imagine? What? I should edit that. I'm not gonna. Maybe give you a bit of a laugh. Might lose a viewer or two. <laughs> okay, the next one is um, by Just Nan, and this is Snow Faces and Snow Bonnets. And so this one is actually, there's two patterns. How can I hold those two patterns? And then there are a couple pieces of the fabric and one of the metal whimsy frames that it comes with. Um, so I will send all that out to you guys. The code word for this was Nan. There were 41 entries. And Michelle Greenier, 162. Um, I have mailed to you before, so I'm just going to pop it in the mail for you. Uh, so congratulations on that. The next one I have is Celtic Series by Fonte River Designs. This is a set of five um, very small patterns. They are like, I think scissor fob size. They're about two inches or two and a half inches maybe, something like that. Um, the code word for this was Celtic. For this one here, there were 29 entries. And oh, I can barely read my own writing. That's terrible, right? Uh, Laura Gan Ganass, 29.57. Sorry, I can't read how I wrote the end of your name. Hopefully you know who that is. It's on the screen, you can read it. <laughs> Um, so congratulations on that one. I hope you enjoy those. They look fun for sure. Um, the next one I have is the Herald Angels and this is by Donna Vermillion. And the code word for this was HARK. This was actually a really fun pattern for me. It was one of the first, um, I shouldn't say one of the first. I think it was the first cross stitch I ever framed though. 
have to say, but one of maybe the first five cross stitches that I ever stitched. And it's very fun. It's perfect for Christmas. Um, I've done it in a gold frame and I hang it up every year and I absolutely love it. And I love looking at it because, um, you know, I look at my stitching and think, oh, <laughs> it wasn't, you know, hmm. I'm a better stitcher now than I was then, let's put it that way, but that's okay. I mean, from a distance, it looks perfect, and um, I really, really love seeing this one. So this one, Hark, there are 24 entries, and Maltese Mom has won that, so congratulations. Send me a message, and I'll get that out to you right away as well. Um, my next one is the Amish Quilt Sampler by Marilyn Leave It Imlem for Told in a Garden, and that is... That one there. Uh, there are 22 entries for this one. The code word was quilt. And uh, M M Dooch 3404 won that. So congratulations. You can send me a message and I'll pop that in the mail to you. Now the next one I have is Christmas Birds by Al Forrest Embroidery. We have 82 entries for this one, and this was a very fun pattern as well. I ended up finishing it into a pillow that I put on my couch at Christmas time. Um, maybe I'll put a picture of that here for you guys. So this one, the code word was bird, and Julie Mark, or Mork maybe, I can't read my A and or O and R. Um, congratulations. Send me a message, okay? Get that in the mail to you. And the last one is one of my favorite ones. I'm hoping to frame this in time for Christmas this year. This one is called um, Victoria Ribbons, and it's part of the sampler collection by Laura J. Perrin. This one is canvas work. It is not cross-stitch. Um, I'm really excited for uh, whoever gets this because, you know, as a cross-stitcher, it's, sometimes it's fun to learn new little stitches, but then to do some canvas work is so much fun. It's very similar to cross-stitch. Um, but yet it's very different. I don't know how to describe it, but it goes by very, very quickly, um, a lot faster than cross stitch, and it's really quite enjoyable, actually. So this one, there are 29 entries, and Nicole C2523, and Nicole, you are the Nicole from Winnipeg, I know. So um, send me your email or your I have your email. I will email you for your mailing address and we'll get this out to you right away as well. Um, I hope you really enjoy stitching it and I'll put in the details of the, the shop that I got all this stuff from so it might be easier for you to get up. Okay, so I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope everybody who you know has won stuff on the giveaways is able to respond so I can get that out to you guys right away and you can have something new to stitch. Um, my next uh, video I think I'm going to do is a whip parade which I've never done one before and um, I'm taking a page out of my girlfriend Samantha's book because on her floss tube anniversary she always does a whip parade and it's almost my first year uh, anniversary on floss tube and I thought it'd be a fun way to celebrate so that will be my next video that I'll be sending out with you guys and then in two weeks time I'll have a regular video again um, with just my usual stitching sharing what I've been up to and what I'm looking forward to stitching for Christmas. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys really enjoyed it and you have a well I guess a, I don't know what day it is. I was gonna say have a lovely weekend but I just worked over the weekend so I guess it's my weekend but it's your work week so or maybe you're retired. Have a lovely week you guys. Take care.